When I finished Bible school, I wanted to know God. I wanted to talk to God and hear God talk to me. So I practiced talking to God for years. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I knew that this is the life he wanted me to live. So I gave myself to it. The same way I would have given myself to lecturing. Do you know what it means to sit up in the night and you are talking to God? Not in tongues. In English, too. If you do that regularly, it will down on you. You will now have an insight that God is a person that you can discuss with. So when you are troubled, you can talk to him. Most of us pray in tongues, but you are not conscious of the God you are communicating with. That's why you can do it. You can pray in tongues. You watch a movie. Your spirit is charging. Huh? There's, there's profit. Because the Bible says, anyone that comes to God, if you come at all, for any reason for which you came, there's a reward for your attempt to engage God. So you spend time speaking in tongues. That's powerful. But if you are going to talk to God in the context that I'm trying to define, you must be, your entire being must be consumed in that engagement. So I had to learn how to talk to him. Then you now discover that the God that we serve, he does not speak much. Are you there? He only answers much, but he does not speak much. So, you can speak to him. When I started trying to speak to God, are you there? Yes, sir. Sit on the seat. Give, you can give him one seat too so that you know that. Okay. Let's talk. Then you tell him all your fears. You might do that for six months and he will not respond. And that's why he says that without faith you cannot please him. If after six months of attempting that, you get discouraged and you stop, it means you didn't have faith in the beginning. Because God is not a man. You are trying to learn about a new person you have never known before. And you are expecting the person to behave the way you want him to behave. You, you are not, you don't mean business. Speak to him. Speak to him. After nine months, when you speak to him, he will answer. Speak to him, he will answer. Speak to him, he will answer. Then you will know what the psalmist experienced. For him to call God a very present help. In the time of trouble. If, if your knowledge of God cannot bring him on the scene in the day of trouble, you don't have a God. Think. You are not with me. I'm not saying you are not born again. I'm just saying you, God is not involved in your daily life. You have, you have designed other means of survival. You've designed other means of support. You've designed other means of sustenance. So you will not be able to bring him into your trouble into your crisis. That means you are naked with that covering. That's the description of your life. The investment of God is designed to make you a certain kind of individual. Oh my God. Are you still with me? Yes. When you want to follow God, don't do what you are doing. Give yourself to him. The way those people that serve spirits in the village, the way they give themselves to the spirit, and the spirit now shapes them to become the kind of person that they eventually become. It's because of their commitment to give themselves over to be shaped by that spirit that they become strong. Because the Bible says that the people that do know their God, not Jehovah, their own God, they shall be strong. The way you are serving God, you will not know him enough for you to be strong. You will not know him enough for you to do exploits in his name. Because everybody does church as if it's, well, it's our culture. We go to church on Wednesday. You are, you are wasting your life. You are wasting your life. I was not born into a poor family. My father was a rich man. I started my journey in riches. I did not look for Jesus because I was poor. Are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? In our state, my dad was the number two man in the state when I, was, I became conscious of where I was. I was not born into poverty. It's not because I was running from something. That's why I now know. I gave my life to Christ in church one day. And I figured. I was seven. I figured that. Okay, if Jehovah is my God. Then I need to give myself over. 
to him. Allow him to shape me. That means I will build intimacy with him until I know how he operates, what he likes, what he does not like. If you are serving a God that is invincible, you need to take time to develop a relationship with him to the end that you know his likes, his dislikes, his preferences, his style, his method, his strategy. Not just dead Bible study and uh, reading the Bible as a religious practice. But you don't know the one whose inspiration that read that book. You need to start by learning how to talk to him. When you speak in tongues for 45 minutes, 60 minutes, your spirit is charged. Then talk to him. Your, there's power on your utterance. He can travel into the spirit realm. Learn how to talk. All those things you call your challenges, learn how to tell him in your understanding. Are you there? Yes, sir. And keep talking. At least one hour of that prayer, talk. Talk in your language. A time will come when he will start answering. Be patient. You can't learn God until God is willing to reveal himself. A lot of us are casual about it. And that's why he's a stranger to you. And in the day of crisis, you cannot bring him on the scene. And as I travel from place to place preaching the gospel, I see people that believe God is an alternative. That's why you will not see him around. For me, it's not an alternative. He's the only life that I have. So if I call his name here, he will answer me. Amen. No, don't say amen quickly. Look on your own life. Do you have someone to call? Because the witch, the wizard, has somebody to call in the day of trouble when things are overwhelming. He rolls up. That room where his altar is, he unveils it, carries it, and begins to do some incantation. Do some incantation. Do some. He believes in, he has worked with that thing for long. He knows the thing is effective. What do you have? That is effective. Sickness will blow across and come on you. Then you go and drip. You are crippled. You do that for another two years. Then the drugs begin to help you. Then you begin to recover. Then, okay. Then you continue. God did not create us as victims. The thing is that we are not humble enough to know, to accept that we are incapacitated. We are limited. So we go on with our own strength, expecting to overwhelm the challenges of life on the strength of our ability. Ah, the Bible says that Holy Spirit you received can make you, make you a certain kind of man. Now, so we're going to dwell here. This is a means by which we want to evaluate ourselves. Have you been made? Have you been made? If somebody dies now, we need to call to anybody to call you to come and look into the situation. Someone can be sick and then he receives in his spirit. You are healed now. Stand up. All the symptoms of the sickness is still there. But until he exalts that work higher than what he's feeling, he will never make an attempt to stand up. And if he does not stand up, it means he doesn't believe God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, to walk with God. The moment he steps out and he no longer con considers his condition, then the power of healing, he becomes a recipient of that power. By what wisdom have you navigated all these years? Because if the spirit is going to make you the first evidence that he's making you is that he makes you quick in understanding. He makes you ruach. The ruach opens you to the faculty of spiritual senses that is superior to your physical senses. You know in Nigeria when we are traveling to the village. There's a way they load vehicles. Huh? Okay. The driver's seat. The driver is sitting here. Are you with me? Yes. 
Then they open the front door, first front door. Then someone will sit on half of the driver's seat. The driver will be sitting on half. Part of his body will be outside of the window, like this. And then he will have his right hand to manipulate the steering. The left is outside. Then first passenger will sit in. Second one will sit on the uh, what they call it, the handbrake. The handbrake. They will push the handbrake down. Then you sit there and half of this side and then the last passenger will sit here and put some of his hand outside that's the front that's the loading of the front seat so if they load the front seat like that you can imagine anything can happen at the back and this loading formula is not with any form of recourse to the size of the car even if the car is a small car the loading formula is the same may the lord give you understanding so one of those days they finished one of the passengers was seriously sick but the, the driver said, I don't, I don't know sickness. The way we load the car when they are healthy people. That's how we load it when they are sick people. Because there is an amount of money that should come out of that transaction. I know you don't understand this. this. I've been seeing your new cars everywhere. New cars, new cars. I said, oh, this is great. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So it came to pass when they loaded the car like that and they were moving on the journey. They now discovered that one of the passengers in front, the lady had died. The Paltica. Fortunately for them, a man of God was in that vehicle. And the man of God did not accept the fact that someone should die in the vehicle that is traveling. So while they were, they were confused, everybody was, okay, how are we going to do this? Who are we going to call? And... <laughs> If you know this village I'm talking about, there's no network, no phone call network. So, where is this girl even going? Where would they? Ah, the questions were too many. The man of God left them and went to commune with God. And God gave him Ruach. He told him, Go to the dead body and pinch her. Initially, when he pinched her, nothing happened. But he knew that that was the instruction. So he left his hand there. And after three minutes, the girl sneezed and came back to life. No prayer. Oh, are you there? Yeah. And she sneezed and rose from the dead. And when she rose from the dead, the sickness that killed her was still came back with her. She was still sick. Oh. The anointing that raised the dead, is this sickness that he cannot take away? That moment was saved. He saved the day because he was quick in understanding. He was enabled into the realm of the storehouse of wisdom. There are many people that we buried that had nothing to do with death. Nothing. But there was no one on whose that was made by the Holy Ghost in the vicinity that had access to the economy of work. The breath of God could not make any meaning on the life of anyone there. That's the congregation of the dead. When you have a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit, that is when you will know that your degree, even though it got you a job, cannot bring you deliverance. My dad was a very devoted Christian. Every evening will come and do Bible study, then he will stand up as a priest. Pray. Sometimes we want to travel. He will pray for the journey. Say, let there be no accident, but there'll be accident. So I was now wondering. We prayed about a no accident situation. Only for us to encounter an accident. Satan was playing with us because he knew we did not know God. We had a religion. We had a religion that compelled us and brought the responsibility of us doing morning devotions, which is powerful. But you are not going to live your life based on morning devotion. Morning devotion cannot sponsor your life. You will need to go deeper than that elementary kindergarten orientation. Yeah. So I wanted to find out why our prayers were not answered. 
that was what led me to the journey of the spirit and I said I will never I will not come back home until I find God yeah. so I was in the city of Kano for those of you that know Nigeria it was every day from January with fasting February March April May June July August 8th God spoke to me he said I can see that you are praying then he stopped. I was confused. Why will you come? I started this exercise since January. Now you are telling me that you can see that I'm praying. Oh, then I did not know the way of the Spirit. I did not understand that there was a schedule, a calendar. I was drawn out for every man because God will visit every man. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou had made him a little lower than the Elohim, and thou had crowned him with glory and with honor. And in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 17, verse 26, the Bible says that he made man of one blood, and he preordained the appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. He has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed, that is, times of visitation and boundaries of habitation so God determines his time to visit you and he also determines the boundaries that you should the nation the location where you must be based in order to fulfill destiny are you doing yes. so I continue In all, it was 264 days of praying and fasting. I said, if, if he doesn't show up, I will not go back home. Because what am I going back to? To prayers that we pray and the opposite happens before the sun goes down? Who were victims? Who were victims of the devil? Our prayer had no force. Our faith had no, was nothing to reckon with. So I continued in that prayer. On the 264th day, I came back from the office, dropped my bag, and I wanted to run to the mountain for prayers. Hallelujah. Then I felt that there were people in my room. The Ruach had started giving me understanding of the fact that it's not only the natural realm that exists. There's another realm that is intertwined with the natural realm, but it sits in another dimension. The spirit realm is not different from this realm in terms of distance. It is here. It is intertwined with this realm. In fact, the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes. If you read his book, you will find that the spirit realm is so intertwined with the natural realm such that it's even impossible for you to find the boundary. He said he went to the field of a man, a lazy man. Went to a field of a man that did not have understanding. And the stone wall was broken over. It was overgrown with weeds. It was natural observation. Then wisdom began to speak to him. He had a little sleep. See this? It's the same matter that was the matter of interest but the Holy Ghost had picked up his observation and wanted to give him perspective from the realm the realm of rock he had a little sleep he had a little folding of the hands to sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that traveled and I want as an arm warrior where is the boundary because it was a physical thing he was looking at but there was a spiritual interpretation are you there Oh, you're not following me. You're not following me. Abraham was called from all of the Chaldees to go to a land that God will show him. The place he was going to was a physical place. Are you, are you still following one of them? Yes. Oh, you're not. You're not with me. The place he was going to was a physical place, a physical location. But God decided not to give Abraham a map. He said, your destiny cannot be fulfilled in all of the Chaldees, your native country. Get out from among your people. Get out from your kindred. Get out from your country. If you ever want to fulfill destiny, <coughs> you must find there is a place for your destiny and it's not here. So now that the man was convinced to travel, God did not give him a man. Meanwhile, the place he was going to was a physical location. He said, you will go to the, a land that I will show you. It means every dream was part of the map. Every inspiration was part of the map. Every vision was part of the map. 
Now, if you are in that situation, you will never want to quarrel with God because He will leave you in the wilderness. You have not depended on God the way Abraham depended on God to find the, the sat nav for navigation to the place, the land that had the capacity to support his destiny. If you have not depended on God like that, you can't know him. There will be no need for him to invest work in your life. Without a map. And he began to navigate. When he spends the night, he raises an altar and begins to commune. He can stay there for another three weeks communing, communing. And then at the foot of the altar, in his sleep, God will say, okay, you go like this. You must pass through Zika. He wakes up, carries his tent, folds it, and he begins to make it to Zika. When he arrives at Zika, puts another altar. So the thing he built, are you, are you still here? Yes, the thing he built was his altar but his tent, he pitched it. So the tent was temporary. The altar was permanent. But for us, we have our tents are permanent. And the altar is temporary. When you are angry, you don't pray. When you are broke, you don't pray. When you are sick, you relieve yourself of prayer. That was not Abraham. And unfortunately for you and me, Abraham had already set the pattern. So God will not accept anything that is less than Abraham. Because Abraham is an example of a man that had to engage God by faith. He got three titles because of his obedience to God. He became the friend of God. He became the father of faith. He became the father of many nations. Such that Jews, Christians and Muslims claim him to be their spiritual ancestor. So if I trace all the houses you have stayed and there is no permanent altar there of angels ascending and descending you missed your map the map can only come by rock for you to be quickened with the understanding that comes when the breath of God is invested into your spirit it, it, it triggers visions it triggers understanding it triggers insight so I said I will not come back home 264th day of prayer rock then I realized I was not alone in the room. So I dropped my back. Then I asked God, if you are the one that is trying to reveal yourself to me that I have not been paying attention, have mercy on me. And show me who these people are. That was the day that I saw angelic beings from that day till today. I came back from work 4 p.m. in the evening. That encounter ended 3 a.m. in the morning. Time was taken away. Time was frozen. That was when I saw the majesty of God on high. You can't stand in that light. Yeah. <laughs> there are some things you encounter that will shift your life forever. You can't stand there. There is no king on earth that carries that majesty. No king. No king. So the honor I give him, I will give no man. Because I've seen his light. I've seen his glory. We went to Kenya. When we got to Kenya, my son in the ministry, he invited me to Kenya. So, came there. He came and told me after the first night. That, uh, one of the contestants for presidency in Kenya wants to come and see you tomorrow. Say, see me. Say, okay. I will give you a feedback on that. So when everybody went to sleep, I stood up in the night. I was looking for him. 12 midnight. Looking for him. Where are you? Where are you? One o'clock. Where are you? Two o'clock. Then the ruach comes. Then I begin to discuss with him. He said, the man that you are going to see tomorrow, name him David. Call him David. Because he is going to be the president of Kenya. Tell him that I was the one that caused division 
between him and the president so that the current president will never be able to say that I made you king. Yeah. I started, are, you, are you still with me? Yes, sir. As at the time I was going to deliver this message, that man was expelled from the leading political party. As at the time I was going to deliver this message, the president was supporting someone in the opposition party to become president. Are you, are you, you, do you understand? Those of you that then the Lord said, go and call him David. Now, if you don't know Ruach, don't put yourself in that condition. You may not be able to go back to Kenya and preach the gospel that they will believe you again. But you know what? Jesus stepped out of heaven and come to my bedroom many times. I know how it is. I know the experience. And I'm not boasting. He gave me the privilege by his mercy. If I tell you I have not seen it, I lied. So we went for the meeting. Sign. Because they knew it was impossible for that prophecy to come to pass. So my enemies went and captured the tape. So that when it fails, they will now come and say, Okay, we have a false prophet. In it. But none of them was given that opportunity. Because... No human being has that intelligence to bring out that dimension except he was made quick in understanding. Kenya invited me for the swearing in. They gave me a business class seat on Kenya Airways to Nairobi. When I came out of the airport, people wanted to lie on the ground. And if they had done it, me too, I would have gone down. And it would have been it. So that was why, yes. Because I know that the, the one that should be celebrated, they can't see him. I know that one. And the nation rejoiced. 60,000 people in Kasarani Stadium of Nairobi, Kenya. I cried. I said, Lord, when will you deliver Nigeria? That was my only prayer. And I prayed that prayer for two hours. Can you give us a moment to see this deliverance in our lifetime? That was the prayer. Oh my God. For he shall make thee quick in understanding and in the fear of God. And he will judge not after the sight of your eyes or your ears. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.